Ryan Day had it going for 11 games. And it was it was tougher for him, too, with the way that this offense hadn't really clicked into high gear like it did with C.J. Stroud and Justin Fields. But, Beam, there's just there's about 10 million things that are going through my mind. Yeah. And that's why we need time in this postgame show, because um, it, it'll be a struggle with the way that you feel to try to put everything down on a sheet of paper. And what order do you put that in? But uh, you, you go with what Ryan Day said at the start for this football game. You couldn't stop their run. So I'm disappointed in the defense. And that's the the side of the ball that. If you would ask anybody, what were you more faithful in going into the game, defense. offense or defense? Yeah. Defense to go and get critical stops when you needed to. I'm more surprised that that offense, after a shaky start from Kyle with the early pick, terrible pick, just terrible. Can't throw. Can't it. have. Can't happen. People are saying Marvin's got to cut that off better. What are you, you kidding? You don't throw it. Don't read it that way. Don't throw the ball. But to get two touchdowns in the second half there yeah. with all the pressure, and then the defense can't get one stop. They score on every possession in the second half. So. You don't stop the run and you lose the turnover battle. Can't win the game we can on the do road there. Some more bigger picture stuff and that'll happen, obviously, a little bit later. But we start, you know, just with with the game. And, and you mentioned Kyle McCord's interception uh, right out <laughs> basically from Jump Street. Um, to your point, yeah, I saw some people saying, Marv, you got to cut that off. Like, But again, you just under those circumstances, you cannot, you cannot throw that pass. I saw Shannon Sharp getting on Marvin for not cutting off the pick at the end. What are you, blind? Like, what are you talking about? You just can't throw that. But you throw the ball. <laughs> Come on, you can't throw the ball. It's a great it's play not on him. Great play the, by the Michigan defender to jump that. Yeah, ball was put right in his lap. He made a nice play on that. Ohio State did a nice job answering, but at the same time, it, it, it was the same story. And, and you mentioned it in Jim Knowles, and we've talked to him here on this post game show multiple times uh, throughout the year. Like they're paying him a lot of money, paying him a good chunk of change. Like it, it had been fixed through eleven games, but quite frankly, I don't, Ohio State fans don't care about the eleven games. Right when Ryan Day first got here, what did he say? Well, you got to win the last game and then win everything else. And we're going on three straight years now of not having that taste of victory. And the defense allowed 338 total yards today. You did outgain them for total yardage, but when they needed, when Michigan needed to pound the ball, and that last drive, Tim, and they just chewed up seven minutes of clock. I mean, that was just like Bane and Batman, man. They're taking you right over their knee and just cracking you down on yeah, it. Yeah, and that's what's tough, too, because it gets back to Ryan Day's animated postgame you know, TV interview that went viral after the Notre Dame win about the toughness, just the he's hearing that, he's hearing the lack of toughness, the lack of physicality from those last two Michigan losses build up. Build I don't think up it was a lack of physicality no, today. No, it... it well, they clearly weren't more physical because they they lost yeah. the, the two big areas. So you, you can't say that. No, I, I certainly am not going to go and use the S word, right, for Ohio State. It didn't feel like that. It wasn't. It wasn't like last year. It wasn't horrific. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't like hide your children, look away. But they, they had that one big drive. Yeah. Last year, they had those big plays, right, that just ripped your heart out. But they also had the one big plotting drive last year. I think it was early third quarter where they maintained possession for it. Like you said, seven plus minutes. Mm -hmm. That's just mentally and physically draining when an offense can do that to you and just Corum and Edwards are just running it down your throats happened last year, sandwiched in between two, three and outs for the Buckeyes. And then just at the time of the game, when it happened here, we can talk all we want about again, Kyle McCord and making those mistakes just sort of bookended, right? Big mistake at the beginning, Big mistake at the end where he gets hit, he gets pressured. Hopefully you're, you, you'd like to think that he can see that pressure. It's coming right in the front, right at his face. Maybe he can dirt that ball or throw it somewhere else where it's not a big hanging ball into yeah. the middle of the field and zone coverage that'll end the game. You're feeling good about getting the call to Julian Fleming. You're, we're saying this doesn't go the Buckeyes way usually, no, right? We Bing? don't have that luck. No, no, no. We think of the Clemson game, these little boom catch. Oh, that's a catch. That's a fumble. You know, Mecca gets on it, but it goes your way. The Denzel play a little yeah. bit earlier in the game. Yeah, it didn't go your way, right? That ball looked like it was oscillating. While the Michigan, you know, receiver is going across the goal line and Denzel rips it away, they don't get the call overturned. But if that ball is not in the end uh, zone, that is an interception. And I don't know. Oh, 100%. Yeah, because yeah, he, he pulls it out before the, the player's knees hit the ground. Right. And the ball's moving around enough. But back to what I was saying about, you know, the run game and, you know, wh wh how it didn't feel like Ohio State was embarrassed physically in this game. That drive takes a lot of wind out of the sails. I know you got a chance. Mm -hmm. I know you got the ball back, but they killed so much clock. And we're both sitting here thinking, oh, they're gonna they're gonna throw for the win, right? 
I mean, and g- give credit to J.J. McCarthy, too. He didn't put up a bunch of numbers. He was Clear, tremendous. Clearly the better quarterback on the field today. Clearly. We've talked talk and, you know, numbers wise, J.J. McCarthy has never been the most brilliant guy. It just and again, their team doesn't have to do that a lot for them to win games. So you keep that into account. But he had about three or four balls today, including the one that it wouldn't have been his fault if Denzel Burke ripped the ball away for a fumble. <laughs> that ball that he threw in there to notice the, the Buckeye defenders, Hartman and Burke had their backs to him to fit that in there right between their two helmets. Oh, how about yeah. the 19 yarder on the sideline? Yeah. Good God, when he's running out of bounds, you think it's a dead play? Wow. Stinks. He was throwing it into buckets through windows is what he was doing today. Yeah, um, yeah his numbers today, 16 to 20, 148 yards. He did have the touchdown. He did a good job, too, with his feet. I mean, four carries for 17 yards, and he had the one big one for 15 yards. So, I mean, hurts you enough there where he had to keep him honest and you had to keep an eyeball on him. What did you make of the end of the half situation with Ryan Day electing to kill off the clock, go for the field? I, I didn't like it. Yeah. I didn't like it. Yep, I was with, and, We were talking a little, little bit about that yeah, earlier. We usually meet up at halftime, right? Yep. When, we, when we get into our, our seats here and we're, we're listening to the game and, and we watch it. I, I'm okay with the punt at the beginning. And we could talk aggressive. We can talk about being aggressive, going out and winning it for the state of Ohio. When you flip field, talking about the first one now, a fourth and one at what the 46 yard line mm-hmm. that really looked like the first down was gained. I thought spots all game long were a little iffy. That that could happen when you're on the road, but okay with the punt there. Didn't like the punt. I don't care if you're into the wind. If you're punting from around the 50, you can't even get that inside the 20. Yeah, bad what, what are we doing? Uh, what are we doing here? But I didn't like that beam at the end of the half, fourth and two with a 52 yarder for a kid who's never made one that long. It's a very tough spot. I Hustle thought environment. Y- your clock stops after first down. So I know you got no timeout. So fourth and two, I-, I feel good. You're at the 35 yard line. I feel good about the defense with 30 seconds left, not giving up points before the half. I would have liked to be more aggressive in that spot to go for it. Get 10, 15 yards, maybe take a shot, do something. And yeah, there you go. I mean, the special teams, right? Has been an issue for the Buckeyes. All year. The punt team has been an issue for the Buckeyes and missing that kick and Michigan kicking a 50 yarder and connecting there you go. There's there's three right there. There's a six point swing right there. You could talk about that being the football game. You and I were, um, you know, obviously watching this game together in here, and I think Ohio State tied the game at 17 a pop. Everyone's like, okay, that's a huge answer there. Uh, you weren't feeling the greatest heading into halftime with Michigan getting the ball back. You were feeling okay about that situation. You tie the game. Your offense was looking to click, and then Michigan just comes right back down, Tim, with a monster drive of their own to grab their own momentum where Ohio State had harnessed it, it just, you could never find your way off of the football field today. I mean, you were okay. You were third, three, and Michigan was three and 12, three, four, 12 on third downs, but they were three of three on fourth downs. (laughs) They weren't needing a lot of third downs. That's the problem, right? That the drive that you're talking about was Corum run. J.J. McCarthy, nice medium hit to, to Colston Loveland. Donovan Edwards, nice gain on first down. J.J. McCarthy run for the big 15-yarder on second and six. Blake Corm gets stuffed, but then J.J. McCarthy on a second and long hits Barner for a nice 18 yards. They didn't need a third down on that drive, and then for a 22-yarder to go for the touchdown. It's just that one honestly might be the one, more, more so than the one we talked about first. It's just how fast. It, I mean, it wasn't lightning fast. It took 340, so it did churn some clock. It just seemed to rip your heart out. And all the good moods and good vibes from tying the game, like you said, Poof. evaporated. And then what hurt as well is then you go three and out on your next offensive drive to give them the ball back to set up you know, what became uh, a Then mon- they make it a two-possession game. And then at that point, you're pressing. you got 12 yeah. minutes left to go. You do score another touchdown to get it to three. And then Michigan, of course, kills the game off with seven minutes left to go. But uh, I, I thought Sharon Moore I coached the heck of a game today. I'll be blatantly 100% honest with you. On the offensive side of the ball, they were kind of doing whatever they wanted to. I Can you think of anything on the spot here that he was was he, was even questionable no, about? No, no. Because we're questioning two off the bat for day, like the the punt on, in early in the game and the end of the first half clock management or decision-making, whether to you know settle for a 52-yard field goal that, sure, he made the practice kick, but... That, 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 that was count. a practice kick. It doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't a bad kick. I mean, he sailed 
He sailed the one that he missed, you know, halfway up the net. You know, so he had the leg there with the wind at his back. But I can't think. I can't it. think of one thing. That... I can't think of one thing for Sharon Moore. No, like you, like you say right there. Again, trying to be, trying to be partial, trying to be uh, right down the middle with that and fair. I, I have to say, man, and look, he's not Jim Harbaugh. All right, right. He's filling in. It's a tremendous job. He's filling in. That was another thing that was. It might. It's not as big when this guy clearly is a smart coach and he's got, he's going to have his chance. Maybe he even takes over as the head coach. I would almost say now, whatever happens with the future of Jim Harbaugh, if Sharon Moore is not connected to anything, he almost is your obvious choice, yeah. right? Like with, with what he's done now and getting these big wins and getting a big win in the rivalry game to keep it going with all the noise. I mean, I, we've, We've done three of these in a row, and they all feel a little bit different, but the noise and the energy going into this one with both teams being 11-0, with Ohio State losing the last two, it felt bigger than ever, and now here we are. I was watching some of the pregame coverage, and I mean, in all of college football instances, since nineteen, the year 1900, yeah. 123 years ago, there's been five cases of two teams playing each other across all college football that had been 11 and 0 and 11 in the last game of the regular season. Yeah. And Ohio state, Michigan had three of them, three instances where this, so you're right. I mean, everything yeah, was on the table. You the had biggest everything games ever in this every, rivalry, everything that is going on up there, the way that the last two years have been handled, they get you in your house this year. You got an opportunity to get it back to them this year up there. And you were just never able to, to grab the momentum in this football game. Let, let me ask you, because we'll ask our, our friend Michael Bennett and a national champion here for Ohio State. What do you think it is besides the the play on the field and how and we could talk about the, you know, running the football and stopping the run. But why why is Ohio State able to put themselves in this position again and again? These last few years, I know they had the one loss in 2021, but they still a lot of college football teams have one loss in the season. And if you win the last one in a big game, you'll be fine. But why? What can you put your finger on? I don't know why this is happening. I don't know if I don't know if you can. I don't don't know if, if you can put your finger on it. I think it's a mental attitude thing. And I'm sure that Mike will talk about this, right? When Urban Meyer came in and and because he, it was interesting because Mike played in 11 and then 12 when Urban came in. So they lost the 11 game. Yeah. Yeah. They they go undefeated undefeated in 2012, uh, lose a game in 2013. And then 2014 obviously is the national championship year, but it's just something about working it every day and have a, having a, an unrelenting willingness to lose this football game. So just be totally unwilling to allow yourself I, to lose. Yeah. A willingness to just go all out, do whatever, do whatever, it, takes. whatever it takes. And you know, I feel, I feel bad for saying, but I guess I'm, I'm get, I guess I'm this year years old now where Travion gets dinged up on a play and I'm just upset about it. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm thinking, Oh gosh, come on. You know, it's just, that's, that's where I am. I'm sure a lot of Ohioans are the same way. It's you, Michigan. You worry about your players, yeah. right? It's not, it's, you know what I'm talking about. It's not anything bad like that or ill will. It's just this game. It's the, I mean, I'm watching, I'm watching clips of Woody Hayes over breakfast, right? I'm trying to call Woody's phone number to hear the Michigan pump up and I can't get through all morning. I'm Everyone trying else to call. is calling. Yeah. Everybody else is calling. I want to call too. Oh man. This is the lowest feeling. Yeah. And it's getting lower every year. It's getting worse and worse. That's what happens when a losing streak continues. And you just, you don't get to make up for it. You have to wait a whole calendar year. That's the other thing. Something, some kind of rip your heart out mentality of whatever they've been doing. It's not enough. It's they've got to do something more. Dig deeper find out the way to crack the code. So 365 days of darkness now lie upon you. The first 11 games, I mean, it's just meaningless. I'm playing a bowl game, college football playoffs out the window. Just, I, I'm not even thinking no. again. It's like last year they got into the college football playoff and we start talking about, Oh, well, could you be happy if they win the national championship without winning the rivalry game I mean, a national championships, a national championship, but you still want to win this game. 
it's it's hard to even get there right now. You take a look at you know Washington or Oregon in the Pac-12. It it doesn't feel like this year you're going to have a a path. No, I think it's it. just it's yeah. totally stonewalled. Before we get to our good friend Michael Bennett, let's pause ten seconds for station identification on the Ohio State Sports Network from Learfield. Always and forever, your Ohio State flagship station. WBNSFM HD1 Columbus. The Fan, Ohio Sports Destination. Again, the final score today from the Big House. Michigan wins their third straight against Ohio State, 30 to 24. Coming up next, we're going to be joined by former Buckeye defensive tackle, All American national champion Michael Bennett, as the Incova Insurance Buckeye postgame show continues on the Ohio State Sports Network from Learfield. Your Ohio State flagship station, The Fan. Now back to the Encova Insurance Buckeye Post Game Show on the Ohio State Sports Network from Learfield. Back here on the Post Game Show, Buckeyes lose in Ann Arbor. And that makes it three straight losses in a row now against them. We are now joined by former Buckeye defensive lineman, All American, national champion, team captain of the 2014 national championship team, Michael Bennett. Michael, first of all, thanks for the time. Second of all, uh, just just your thoughts on this. This is the third year in a row we've done this with you. Yeah, it's it's. I'm happy to always be on with you guys, but it's a sad state of affairs when you got to give me a call after this game. Um, it's crazy for me to think that we have now. I think every senior and junior on that team has never beat that team up north. Um, it's just it's it's hard to conceptualize. It really is, and you have to go back to the '90s, Michael. I believe it was '91 to '94. And then 90, 95, 96, 97. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's, straight. it's happened. Yeah. It's only happened one time yeah. in, in our lifetime, me and you and Timmy just a couple of times, but yeah, it really is. It's hard to, hard to fathom uh, what has been going on the last couple of recent years here. And it's just the last game of the year, Mike, 11 wins. It was great. But at the end of the day, not good enough today in Ann Arbor. You know what? I'll be honest with you guys. I blame Tim. I went on Tim's show and he, he, told me how's the defense going to do, and he made me say it. He made me say that they were going to be great. Um, and I'll say this, guys, if we're being honest, I was pleased with how tough the team looked. I did think we did well in the trenches. They had that long drive um, in the fourth quarter. Michigan did, but other than that, like it was a gritty game. It was a hard-fought game, um, and it was just really a shame that we couldn't have more production through the air. Like We leaned on the O-line. We leaned on the defense, and we knew Michigan was a good team. Um, and they gave our defense a, a tough fight. But it's not like we were just getting torched. You know, there was the early interception that set Michigan up for a, a five-yard touchdown. There was the questionable touchdown that yeah. they got. That yeah. There were some there were some plays that just here and there decided the game. But it it wasn't like a couple of the losses we've had where I was genuinely embarrassed for our Buckeye team. This is just one where. He really, really wanted that win after two losses, um, and it was a hard-fought game against a good team that we just weren't on the right side of. I, I agree with everything you said, Michael. That's a, that's an astute observation. That's sort of letting the the boiling blood die down. You're on the road against an 11-0 number three team in the country, but again, uh, even me and Beam, you, we're, we're, we're not going to be thinking that way as we sort of piddle around here for the next week, not going to Indianapolis And, yeah, I mean, you could put some blame on Day, some blame on Kyle, the defense in the second half for letting Michigan score on every single possession and not being able to, you know, give that offense another chance when they scored two touchdowns. It's it's hard to it. It's hard to pinpoint it exactly. But, you know, Michael, what what did you think of the way the linebackers played and just how some tackles were missed and more on that defense, not not being able to get those stops when you badly needed them in the second half? Yeah, I think the, the biggest highlight was allowing Michigan to run, what was it, eight minutes off the clock or something yeah, on that last yeah. lap. You have, you have to get a stop. You have to. And then we saw it throughout the game. Um, Michigan was tearing us up with their tight ends. I don't, you know, who, I don't know what our defensive scheme was, but maybe they just found a good matchup where our linebackers couldn't cover them or they were finding gaps in defense. Um, but our, the tight ends, that, you know, they just had a good game plan with that. Um, but the truth of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, like, Ohio State expects a lot. We, You, you know, if you can have a great season, but nobody cares about going 11-1. and one. Like, nobody cares about 11-0 and 0 if we can't win this game. Um, so there are going to be some questions asked, and that's, it's insane to ask some of these questions that were, you know, that are going to come up, but, like, three, three losses in a row to Michigan is not what we're looking for. 
three years where we don't get to go to the Big Ten championship is not what we're looking for. So um, we got to make some changes, and it's just such a shame because we really did have a stellar defense this year, and we just haven't been able to put all of the pieces of a Buckeye team together in a while. Um, so, you know, we're on to the next. You know, hopefully we don't get pushed out of the playoffs, but we'll see. And and we got to get some change. we got to be able to overcome this team late in November. He is Michael Bennett with us here on the post game show. Mike, I mean, you know, these games are so physical and they're so violent and you obviously watched it today and it was gritty. And, you know, you talked about the team's performance, but I mean, when you're on the field and a final drive, understanding that, you know, you can give the, your team an opportunity, give them the ball back and they have a chance. And then Michigan drives seven minutes on you. Uh, like you have pointed out earlier. I mean, that's just gotta be, that's gotta be so tough in that room right now. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. Because once again, I, you know, there there are a couple plays there where the O line really looked like they dominated our D line, but it it wasn't reminiscent of a year or two ago where it was like our D line is just tapping out. Like I thought the guys were fighting, I thought they were doing well. Michigan was getting a rough three to four yards here and there, and then a good pass. It was just, you know, you you have to make that stop. Like that's our defense, though. That's been our defense throughout the season. Is we bend, we don't break. So we've never been that to that defense that just three and outs people the whole time. We, we are, we, our defense is set up to bend and to give yards and to allow a cushion, but to deny touchdowns. And that's what they did. It just, it just took seven minutes when you didn't have seven minutes to give. And on top of that, we had to take timeouts and Kyle, you know, then he had to drive down the field in a minute with no timeouts. That was going to be a, that was going to be an uphill battle um, every step of the way. So, you know, that defense, I, I have a hard time pointing the finger at them. I thought they fought their butts off um, against a good Michigan team. They got got a couple times, but they played what they usually play. Um, and turnovers kill games and change games. So to have Michigan get that early interception that led to a touchdown and to get a touchdown called where it should have been an interception, those are game-changing plays. Our defensive tackle, Michael Bennett, uh, can have some interesting perspective here because he plays for the Buckeyes in 2011, 2012, 2013, and 2014. So you mm-hmm. lose that first one. But what can yeah. you tell the listeners, and maybe what could you also you know, maybe explain to some of the players about that attitude adjustment when Urban came in? Because there's so much more, right? It's about the game that's being played, but it's about tone. It's about attitude. A lot of these things feel like they've been right all throughout the year, they feel like the correct things have been said, that they've been doing the right things, but it comes to a screeching halt today. What can you maybe say about losing that one and then winning the rest of them as your time as a Buckeye? I'd say the emphasis that Urban was able to put on the game was like, it's not an option to lose. There's no, you know, oh, two teams are going at it and we're going to see who comes out the other side and we want it to be us. It's like, no, no, no. There, we, you, there is no losing to that team up north. This is a 100-plus year rivalry, millions of Buckeye fans around the world watching this game, caring about this game. Your families are watching. This is, if you want to get past into the next level, into the title, into the Big Ten Championship, into the National Championship, this game is the hurdle. And so everything rides on this game. And, like, yeah, you've got to care about the weeks leading up to it. But those weeks leading up to it, you know, they're all to make sure that this game the weight, the proper weight is given to it. And so, like you said, every, all the right things have been said, all the, all the, I don't know what the change has to be. Maybe, maybe Michigan's just that much better than they've been in the past, but it needs to be this refusal to let any inconvenience, any adversity stop you from winning. And I, I remember my senior year, um, we were struggling a little bit and I got real fired up on the sidelines with the guys. I was like, like, no dude, this isn't one of those games where we can just kind of be down and, Oh, I don't have the energy or it's kind of cold, whatever it is. There's no, that's no option. This team does not get to beat us. And, you know, I don't, like I said, I can't speak on what's said in the locker room. I can't speak on uh, the mentality that the coaches are giving to the players because I'm not there, but I want to see fire. I've, I've, I've repeated that to you guys year in and year out. I want to see that fire. I want to see blood boiling. I want to see guys flying. And that's why I say, I mean, it's not going to be popular. I was happy with the defense until that last drive. Like we, they were hustling, man. They were chasing people down. A couple missed tackles here and there, but this is football. Um, but you got to see you got to see a little bit of a little bit of bloodthirstiness out there during this game. Yep, absolutely. Thanks, Wolverines Michael. get it done.
three and zero in the last three years. Always appreciate it, Michael. Have a try to enjoy the rest of your weekend. Try to have a great Christmas and the holidays and everything. Hopefully, we're not talking to you again next year. All right. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, guys. Go Bucks always. There he goes, Michael Bennett, with us here on the post game show. You know, I'm just surf- searching Twitter and everything, and see a picture of Marvin Harrison Jr. just sitting down. Blank staring the big house. Yeah, Paul said it there, yeah. and I don't know how many people were processing that in real time, but then when you take a second, I mean, it's more about just losing the game. But yeah, I mean, whatever bowl game Ohio State goes to, if it's not the college football playoff, Which is highly if you unlikely. don't get some chaos to happen for you to get in, like you were banking on last year and it worked, so what are the odds that that's going to happen two years in a row where you get that that good fortune? But yeah, you wouldn't think that a guy that is... And on his way to, you know, maybe transcending the position, a top five pick in the NFL draft. Who the heck knows? Uh, could he be the number one overall pick, depending on how his offseason goes? You wouldn't expect him to be playing in a in a bowl game that's not the college football playoff. With the way the trends have gone, even with Buckeyes. Hard for me to comprehend that that guy does not have a pair of gold pants. It's, it's really, I mean, I'm looking back and seeing... You know that uh, you know C.J. Stroud had 349 passing yards in one of these games, right? And you know, as good as look how good of a football player he is, right? Everyone in the world can see C.J. Stroud is more. I mean, you would say in the conversation for Rookie of the Year. No, he's in the conversation for MVP. Yeah, you know, he's a lock to get the Rookie of the Year. That's how good of a football player that guy is. He had two cracks and does not have a pair of gold pants. I feel. Got it. That Marvin Harrison Jr. right on his heels is going to go on to the league and not know what it's like. And you think about the lost game in 2020, Beam, you're back to 2019. It just feels because it is. It feels like such a long time because it is such a long time. It's been 1,454 days since you beat them. Dwayne Haskins, rest in peace, was the quarterback here the last time you won at home. Yeah. I mean, come It's incredible, right? Uh, By the way, Michaels gives us great stuff. Yeah, He gives us great stuff. He's not not afraid to tell us exactly how he's feeling. You know, being about, you know, six, seven years removed from his time here. But you could tell when he watches the game, he's feeling every single hit. (laughs) And... And then the the different kind of feeling where a, a, a football player transitions past his career and then sort of watches it with everybody else. Yeah. And you, it's a, it's a weird dynamic, right? Don't you wonder? I know you're, you're good friends. You grew up with Michael, mm-hmm. but don't you wonder what that has to be like to be inside his brain or any of the other, you know, former football players that we've become friends with through doing this. It's fun to watch games with them. Yeah. Like I've watched games with Tyvis, Tyvis Powell, as everyone knows, who had the great interception in the 2013 game with Devere Posey. It's just, it's different for, for all of them, you know, depending on their personality, but it's I I just can't imagine what what that dynamic is like to, like, to go to that. I like what he had to say there, and just an just total willingness to do whatever you need to do to not lose that football game. You weren't allowed to lose. You weren't allowed. You weren't. It wasn't an option. You know, <laughs> Urban came in there. They had lost in 2011 in the transition transition had year when Luke Fickle was at the helm. Had enough of that, and that was it. It was. It's not going to happen. We can't play for a national championship this year, but you can go 12 and 0. <laughs> right, you can you can go twelve and zero, and then that's it. You won't be playing in a bowl game or anything, but you you have to win that game. And uh, he was seven and zero, and now here here we are again. The final score today from the Big House: Michigan thirty, Ohio State twenty four. Coming up next, we're going to check your scoreboard from across the country as the Incova Insurance Buckeye Post Game Show continues on the Ohio State Sports Network from Learfield. The Fan, Ohio Sports Destination. This is the Ancova Insurance Buckeye Post Game Show on the Ohio State Sports Network from Learfield. Snap to McCord. McCord rolling to the right, throws to Ibuka. He's got it and punches it into the end zone for an Ohio State touchdown. As McCord hit Ibuka, drifting out to the right, Emeka Ibuka with his fourth touchdown catch of the year. And the Buckeyes trailing 14-9. to There are a couple of drops. I think Emeka probably wants back. It was a great play by the Michigan defender. I can't remember which drive that was on Timmy. I think it was the Marvin touchdown drive at the end of the game. Yeah, that one was later in the game. You got some points, but Emeka went up. It's going to be a tough catch. Yep. Yep. And, you know, unfortunately wasn't able to bring it down. No problem on the no PI there because it wasn't. It was just that good of a play by the defender. 
first series of the game, I believe, when Ohio State went. I mean, he had Third a ball play that was maybe a little bit behind him, but that's a that's a, bring it in. That's a catch that you're going to want back. I mean, if you're going to be off to the NFL and you're going to be a projected first round pick, like that's that's a ball that you need to bring in. This is no excuse, but did that sunlight play an issue with some of those? It, it looked, looked like, like it was pretty it like it was yeah. bothering Kyle, and maybe that gave him some issues when he and Marvin Harrison Jr. weren't on the same page on the second drive, right? But yeah, to start with a three and out and miss a Mecca on a ball that is at his hip and should be a first down on third and short. And the the clip that we just listened to, that one was so big, Bean, because I don't know what the feelings were across Buckeye Nation until they have that drive and score. How the game is even going to go. It kind of settled you down a little bit yeah. that, okay, off, af, I mean, after the three and out, right? And Michigan gets on the board first, they score. And you're thinking, okay, good. Like you can actually compete in this football game. Well, today. yeah, because you kicked the field goal. Michigan went went down, scored, scored another touch. So it's fourteen yeah. to three. Fourteen three. I mean, this is going to get out of hand in a hurry. I got my son already telling me, you know, if this goes twenty one three, Dad, I'm out of here. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. I'm going to Minecraft. <laughs> what am I going to tell? What am I going to tell you? But you'll come back if they score a couple, right? <laughs> <laughs> and get and make it a one possession game. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll be back. But. Yeah, that that was a big drive to just show that you could play in this football game today, and it wasn't going to go exactly as planned. But all bets are off. You're down fourteen to three. You know, maybe maybe that took away a little bit of Ohio State's idea of you know, how they could run the football. But then they do have that drive in the second half where it was. That's the thing, Beam. Uh, it was they, in there. They it was had in there. Something in the tank, right? It just didn't show itself all throughout. And that's it's it's like we talk about with a quarterback, right? We talk about it with Kyle, with any quarterback. It's not about what high level throws you can make. It's about how often are you doing that and how often are you minimizing the bad plays? You turn the ball over at the beginning and the end of the football game. You made a bunch of great plays in between. Yeah, sure. I feel bad for the guy, but. It didn't happen often enough. The running game, it didn't happen yeah. often enough. There was a drive in there where it worked, so you know they can do it, but the consistency wasn't there. Michigan got the better of you again in that department. Yeah, and I think, too, I mean, Ryan Day was pretty upset with Kyle McCord. I mean, he was, he was. laying into him Come a on. lot. He was he laying was. into him a lot today. Dave Holmes had a pretty good report. He yeah. did a nice job, too, on the broadcast. Yes, I did. like when he gets to fill in for, for Matt Andrews, a uh, guy from 10 TV in Columbus, and that... He said it, I think, after one of those where he he just went up to to Kyle McCord about what was going on. I forget which which empty drive that was in the in the second half. It would have been on that three and out, mm-hmm. and just a couple of quick exchanges didn't last long. But Day clearly frustrated. You know, you you saw him frustrated after he missed Marvin early in the football yeah. game, and it's it's big. It's got a. I'm sure he feels more of the onus being such a quarterback coach sure that he is and just the players who have come before him in that room yeah of recent recent memory all right Buckeyes and Wolverines weren't the only two teams in action today not that it really matters everything that's going on around college football right now what what I mean come on you're you're telling me yeah. you don't care about Texas A&M and number 14 LSU I mean see, really. see any reports about Texas A&M floating around X today I sure haven't. So uh, A&M on the road at number 14, LSU. Here's uh, the Aggies getting in on the scoring and what would be a, a high flying affair. Third and three from the LSU 14. Pistol formation. Fake the handoff. Henderson's got Jake Johnson at the five to the two. End zone touchdown. Aggies. He was actually tackled into the end zone. Aggies have the lead. 14 seconds before the half. Yeah, that would. Uh, that was a big second quarter for Texas A&M. Andrew Monaco from Learfield on the call. But the fourth quarter, LSU steps down on the gas and runs away to a 42 to 30 win, coming from behind. To win at home, uh, Jaden Daniels had 120 rushing yards. And one of the Heisman favorites there. Wasn't the leading passer in this game. That would have been Jalen Henderson for AM. Jaden Daniels through the air, 16 of 24, 235 yards, and four touchdowns. Four touchdown passes. He's going to be in Manhattan. For and sure. he, they had that game against nobody last week where he just piled. <laughs> I mean, piled the yeah. stats so high. 
like the biggest Thanksgiving play you've ever seen. Oh, I got a McNeese State here in front of me. I don't even know who they played, but let's go for 600 total yards and seven touchdowns, right, to show the guys at the Heisman Trust of what I can do. Let's go to this Kentucky on the road at number 10 Louisville game here. Louisville with an early lead as well. Plummer from under center. Jordan, the running back. Jordan gets it. Jordan, I think he got in. No sign yet. Touchdown. They do sign now. Well, that would make it 17-7. Paul Rogers, the call in Learfield, a shorty there. This one was just close all the way. But again, four-quarter football game, Kentucky. Gets it done with a 38-31 victory. We had that on opposite of the Ohio State-Michigan game. That was a fun game. That was a that was a really fun college football game. So congrats to the Kentucky Wildcats. They finished the season at 7-5. and five. They'll be going bowling. Louisville going to be playing in the ACC championship game against Florida State next week. So we'll see how that one goes. That'll be interesting. It is rivalry week. Iron Bowl down in Auburn, Alabama. This one is at the half. Bama up 17 to 14 against Auburn. This one is a rock fight every single year as well. Throw out the records, right? Do all the whole sports radio adages, like do all of that. But that's a really good college football game that's going on right now. Again, Bama leads at the half against Auburn, 17 to 14 in the Iron Bowl. You got uh, the Pac-12 is going to dissipate, of course. We all know the Big Ten is going to take some of their big fish with UCLA, USC, and then throw in Oregon and Washington. That news came later, but they're all going to join. Arizona and Arizona State finishing things up, too. They This should stay a rivalry game because they're both joining a, a new conference together. But Arizona leads Arizona State on the road 38 to 7 right there. Wildcats ranked number 15 in the country. And BYU on the road at number 20, Oklahoma State. This is a big 12 game. Cougars chasing bowl eligibility at 5 and 6. And it's looking good for them. They're up 24 to 6 right now. Also 10 seconds. This would call this one at halftime. Number 21, Tennessee up on Vanderbilt, 24 to 10. Number 25, Liberty is 11 and 0. Liberty's an 11 and 0 football team. So chasing some perfection. And they're beating up on UTEP on the road, 28 to 7 at the half. How about the Apple Cup? Late second quarter team that you got to be watching here you're going to start to play it this way right if you can snap out of the the funk and the mood that we're in and cheer against teams that are in the picture for the college football playoff number four washington undefeated 11 and 0 leading wazoo washington state 14 to 7 right now washington state had such a hot start this year now they're a five and six football team yeah fighting for bowl eligibility how are they uh but yeah 14 to 7 that one middle of the second quarter right now washington with the advantage over the cougars big 10 action uh, as well earlier from today final and the old oaken bucket oh i got something from the oaken bucket let's hear it you want to hear this how's 98 yards sound for you the hoosiers with a big play end over end and high again it'll be inside the five it'll be one yard line it's where jalen lucas picks it up and now he takes it outside he may go jalen lucas at the 50 40 down to the 30 giving chase they're not gonna get him touchdown indiana Jalen Lucas for the score, and Indiana retakes the lead. Don Fisher, the call from Learfield there. I mean, you get a play like that, special teams beam and a rivalry game, that can really turn the tide. But Purdue, to their credit, they were not done. They stayed in this thing. They get the Oaken Bucket with a 35-31 win. Hudson Card, 275 and three touchdown passes. 17 points for the Boilers in the fourth quarter compared that to three for the Hoosiers. That was the difference in the football game right there. Some finals yesterday from Black Friday. Penn State annihilates Michigan State. By the way, Michigan State announcing today that Jonathan Smith, the coach for Oregon State, will be their new head coach. That was official. That came out a little bit earlier today. Uh, And then, of course, yesterday, uh, Iowa taking down Nebraska in a great football game, 13 to 10. Some live games going on across the Big Ten right now. This one is at the half. Wisconsin and Minnesota all tied at halftime up there in Gopherland at 14 apiece. Minnesota fighting for bowl eligibility. Closing in on halftime in Piscataway, New Jersey. Maryland at 28. Rutgers 17. And then a good one breaking out here in the Big Ten West between Northwestern and Illinois. That game is at halftime. Northwestern up 21 to 20 on the fighting Illini. Illini looking to get to bowl eligibility. Northwestern already there. Huh. All three of those games you ran down are all five and six win teams. Yep. And the fact that Northwestern can 
get to seven and five in this regular season. Incredible job. Boggles my mind. And we know their coach, David Braun, has already been made the permanent coach there. So that's happening. Some finals in the MAC from today. Northern Illinois beat Kent State 37 27. Sorry, Flashes. That's a 0 8 season in the MAC. That's a 1 11 season overall. And another solid year for the Red Hawks down in Miami. They beat Ball State on the road. Tough one, though, but they won nonetheless. 17 15, 10 and 2 for Miami. Good this year. season down in Oxford. Good that's season. Good. That's good any year. Yep. You're, if you're in the MAC, you get 10 wins. Yeah. Usually the schedules that you're willing to go and play really tough teams in the non-conference. I want to say they beat Cincinnati at their place early in the regular season. I think they did. Went to Nippert and got a win. Yeah, and then also Ohio beating Iowa State a little bit earlier on in the year as well. You can watch any college football tonight. We got Florida State, we got Florida, at Notre Dame at Stanford going off at seven o'clock. You got the battle for the Peach State down in Georgia at seven thirty. Georgia and Georgia Tech. I just I think I'm, I'm watching just, the Buckeyes. I think I'm just kind of kind of done. Yeah, I'm I'm watching Buckeye basketball. That'll be the thing I keep my eye on. Seven o'clock tip tonight. Seven o'clock tip. Buckeye basketball will play Santa Clara. For the Emerald Coast Championship. Hey, you know, win a little mini tournament. You beat Alabama in a in a battle of tremendous backcourts. Bruce Thornton, Roddy Gale. A 29 for Bruce, 23 for Roddy. It's a good game. Career also. highs, and you beat a team at their own game, putting up 92 points. Uh, you do have the Cincinnati Bearcats. They've had a rough, rough year. Back to football. 3-8, and eight, uh, taking on 7-4 and four Kansas at Nippert. That's 7-30 tonight. We also have the Columbus Crew in action in the playoffs down in Orlando. That game getting going in about 10 minutes. That is a win or go home in the Eastern Conference semifinals down in Orlando. Got so, it. Got it. They're one game affairs now, One right? game. Yep. They had the best of three in the early round of the playoffs. Now it's just a win or go home situation all the way through. Again, the final score today from the Big House. Michigan takes down Ohio State 30-24. to Coming up, we're going to hear from head coach Ryan Day as the Incova Insurance Buckeye postgame show continues on the Ohio State Sports Network from Learfield. Always and forever, your home of the Buckeyes. Home of the Buckeyes. The fan. Now back to the Encova Insurance Buckeye postgame show on the Ohio State Sports Network from Learfield. And they get right on the ball out of the shotgun. It's McCord handing to Henderson, squirts into the end zone for a touchdown. A three-yard run by Travion Henderson. Ohio State with a quick snap, and they get their second touchdown of the game. And they're a point after away from tying this game, trailing 17-16. to He had worked so hard to grab that momentum. It's 17-17. And then it just That was the one. Yeah. The great physical drive, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone in Ohio felt good about it after the offense did that. And then the momentum just goes right back to Michigan. They have 182 yards through the air, 156 yards on the ground to the Buckeyes, uh 271 through the air, 107 on the ground. Mm. Yeah, that's the that's been the story all year with Kyle McCord, right? Able to put some stuff together. Able to utilize the talented weapons that we have. Can we just, for a second, acknowledge how great, not not that we didn't yet, we did for a a couple seconds on the show, but Marvin Harrison Jr., some of the catches he made to sort of get this thing off the ground. He's being tackled to the ground, and he catches it anyway. You know, for a big, you know, 40-yard gain. And first big play of the game, too, Mm -hmm. was him just, Kyle McGord throwing a really nice ball, just stuck it right to his back shoulder, right over defender, and he makes the grab. But, you know, he, he gets the yards. He gets a couple touchdowns with the two picks. And some killers. of the miscues are just killers. Yeah. Uh, not so much the incompletions. You're going to have some of those, but the picks. Killer. Julian Fleming, I thought, had a nice game today, too. Oh, that catch that he had that it's kept really the, the drive going. Yeah. At the end of the first half, that led us to the chance to make that decision. Yeah. To settle for the 52-yard field goal or not? What are they, backed up at their own three? Yeah. Unbelievable catch by Fleming in that spot. Yeah, it was really good. I thought Julian played a heck of a, uh, a football game today. Three catches, 58 yards for him. Marv, five, care, or five catches, 118 yards, and one touchdown, of course, that long on the 44-yarder with the P.I. flags just draped all over him. But uh, here was some of Ryan Day in the, in the post-game press conference about just how disappointing it is yet again. We're all disappointed. Uh, we know that um, what this game means to so many people, and um, and so to come up short is certainly uh, crushing. Not only uh, just because you invest your whole year in it. We know at Ohio State what this game means, and so um, you know there's there's a locker room in there that's devastated. And it wasn't a lack of effort, but again, you know we didn't win the rushing yards, we didn't win the turnover battle. So 
you're not going to win a game. Yeah. And I mean, all the instances, Tim, where you can look at it and say, whoever wins the turnover battle and wins the rushing battle, like you are going to win the game. I think it's like 20, one out of the last 22 games like are that way uh, in this rivalry series. Yeah. But yep. it's just, I think, I think for me, the reason why, you know, this, this stings so, so bad is because this team this year felt different. It felt like they had an edge. It felt like they were uh, a little bit different than last year, maybe like that. They were more of a complete football team. And then you go up there with everything on the line. And again, we're sitting here having to do this show. I didn't think it was effort either. No, Did you? No. What what was what were like the first couple things that you pointed to, knowing that it wasn't effort? Because we just talked about that big drive they had, where they did run the football a little bit. They they told themselves we're going to be committed to this, pick up some tough yardage. Travion's you know plotting forward, falling forward when he's getting hit on that drive, but it just it all it all didn't connect. So if it's not effort. Where where is it falling short? I think it was the turnovers for sure. I think you can't give Michigan that ball off the seven yard line. We're talking smarts, right? I think it's we're, it's, we're talking good old fashioned football smarts and reading the play and being a little bit more you know deceptive in what you're doing. Yeah, and the one at the end of the game, sure, it's it's the crusher, like that's the game sealer. Yeah, but you're trying to make the play. You know, the defense knows what you're no going to be doing there. Left on the clock here. You're trying to make something happen. Get the ball out. You don't want to take the grounding penalty like. Let's say that that's okay, but really the first turnover. And then I think the end of the half situation for sure. I know we can play revisionist history and we can play armchair quarterback at the same time, but you and I, even at that point before they kick the field goal, like, yeah, I, we're I thinking, just didn't, oh, I don't I didn't like, like it. Didn't like, like it. it. Yeah. Didn't like it at all. 52. If that was a 48 yarder, I can understand uh, four yards is a big difference when you're talking about a, a young field goal kicker who has been acceptable between 40 and 49 yards, not not hitting one outside of 50 though. So that would be the first one that he's ever hit. And that's, that's a very, very tough spot with the way the wind was. It was clearly affecting the punting game in that first quarter, though. I don't think it should have affected the punting game as much as it did when you're talking about punting from midfield and you can't get it inside the 20. That's, that's not good. So that special teams were a matter. Yeah. And yeah, beam, it's just, you know, you can't have a turnover in that spot. You just got to know. You can't give that up. The defense got it to a fourth down, you know, mm-hmm. took them four plays They on a seven yard field, right? Well, you're giving them four th- plays on a seven yard field and they finally punch it in. You're giving them three points no matter what, no matter what. Yeah. You're giving them, you're giving up points. And honestly, it, you, you gave them a touchdown. It's basically a pick six. When you throw that ball, that spot, there's some stare downs, you know, yeah. every now and then, when he kind of knows what his, what his number one option is, you can see a little bit of that stare down more than you would like. I think there was a play where he went with the out route on a third down. It was the drive where they did wind up getting the field goal. And I think they had a corner route. It might have been Fleming. It was. That got a yard. Um, a yard's a lot in a game like this of separation. If you are If you know you've got the field goal, Why are you throwing an out route short of the sticks? It wasn't going to be good enough anyway. It It skips. Lob that ball up and let Julian have a play at it. If it's incomplete, okay. But we tried. We tried for six. Not some throw to the out to the sticks that was short. Sorry. You know what I'm saying? Not some throw to the sideline that could have been stepped in front of for a long pick six. And just a bad ball, and it wasn't going to work anyway. So it's just some stuff like that. And it was a stare down. Plays like that throughout the game. That and uncharacteristic missed tackles. I think that that was a, that was a big thing for the defense today. Yeah, some Sonny mis- sometimes. Tommy. Tommy sometimes. Yeah, there were, uh, you know, Steel Chambers seemed to be all all over the place. He had a great he had a, he had a missed tackle or two, but yeah. he he actually was pretty good. I mean, to meet guys right there at the the line of scrimmage and throw his body around. So, again, it doesn't feel like this was on any one defender. But clearly, you know, you're going to have to go back and look at the way some of those guys played on defense when it just wasn't enough to get off the field enough in the second half. They scored. You held them to a couple field goals, but Michigan scored on every drive of the second half. Yeah. And that hurt you when you're trying to play catch up. Absolutely. It did. What did Ryan Day have to say about the end of half scenario. Yeah. Where instead of going for it in that fourth down, they killed off the clock and went for the field goal. 
four, I think it was fourth and two, or at least a long two, maybe three. And, you know, I felt like at that point we were, we had an opportunity to kick a, was a 52 yarder. And I feel like that was probably the right thing to do. If we can get three points coming out of the half, especially starting the ball on the two yard line was probably the right move. If you make it, you feel great. If you don't, you don't. Um, so we missed it. And so certainly, you know, we'll second guess everything, but you know, if you don't convert on that fourth and three, then you don't get anything. So I felt like at that time, that was the right move. Understand all of it. Understand all of it. It's what, it's what you're paid to do and make those calls and, it, it's on you more when it doesn't work. Here is Ryan on the interception that we've talked a lot about, the the one early in the football game. Uh, not not a good start. You know, you want to have a quick start. You know, the kid made, made a nice play. Johnson jumped inside on a slant and um, and, and made a nice play. You know, I, I have to see it on film, but he, I know he's playing a little bit inside leverage there. And you know, uh, Kyle, you know, I, I think just kind of fired in there and, and on a slant play. You know, it's a bang bang play, and then so we'll have to look at the film and find out exactly what what took what took place on the play. But uh, that's what I saw from my vantage point. That was the communication that we had on the sideline. Yeah, he did make a nice play on the ball, but again, you can't you cannot throw that pass right there in that situation. Uh, do anything else. Again, the final score today from Ann Arbor, Michigan thirty, Ohio State twenty four. Coming up next, we're going to wrap things up, hand out some Buckeye leaves as the Encova Insurance Buckeye Post Game Show continues on the Ohio State Sports Network from Learfield. This is the Encova Insurance Buckeye Post Game Show on the Ohio State Sports Network from Learfield. McCord back to pass with pressure coming, throws middle of the field, caught Harrison, who moves to the right side and slips into the end zone, Marvin Harrison, for a touchdown of 14 yards, Marvin Harrison was in the middle of the field, slipped out to the right, caught the pass from his high school teammate, and Ohio State now trailing 27-23. It's a good day at the office for Marv. Again, five catches, 118 yards, one touchdown. He was targeted nine times. Obviously, that one interception, that was a killer right at the beginning of the game. But uh, it was a good day and could quite frankly be the last time that you ever see him in Scarlet Gray. Did you think they were going to win at that point? When they get the second touchdown well, there's after the Michigan answer? Eight minutes left to go. A lot in the of game. time left. It's like, okay, defense, you let that one in when we tied it up at 17-17. And that was a big letdown because that was a tough drive to go and tie that game. Pin your ears back. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, you you give up the, the touchdown drive where they don't even have a third down and Blake Corm just saunters in from 22 yards. Mm. Then you go and score again to cut it to three. You're just, you're just asking for one stop, just a punt. Give up a couple first downs, just eventually force a punt. I thought there was a chance. I did when they scored. When Marvin got in the end zone again, and even when they had the football with a minute left, the fact that they hit a couple of yeah. a couple of plays, it just takes one, right? It just takes one. I'm not going to sit here and say I was, you know, over 50% confident that they were going to get that, but you start to dream, right? You start to dream because you know how this is going to go for Kyle McCord with the way the season went and then losing this game. You and I just had guttural sounds uh, when Marv hit, there was like, was that 30 yards and they got to the 40 yard line? Yeah. And I was yeah. Both like, okay. who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Who I mean, knows? You're, yeah. you're at the, you're at the 20, right? They, they didn't take the fair catch on the yeah. kickoff. Yeah. X and you didn't even 20. get to the 20. Yeah. So you need, and you have no timeouts And that first ball that you throw to Cade. If that's completed. Oh, that's a disaster. Yeah. A disaster, a two or three yard gain. And the defense is going to stay on him. And, uh, you mm-hmm. know, Hold you down for a while. Thank goodness. But yeah, there was at least a couple of plays made on that drive. All right. Let's give out some helmet stickers. Hey, hey, hey. It's time to hand out some Buckeye leads. Not many today. In the whole year, Timmy, they were 11 and 0. We were handing out leaves left and right. Marv today. I'll go. Uh, I'll go steal. Jack Sawyer. Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr. is the the player of the game for me. Player of the year. Player of the last two years for Buckeye football. I'll go Travion for his work on that drive. Chip train him, I thought. Gave some nice stuff. Yeah, when he was in he ran ran hard. And that's it. Short list today. Yeah. Short list. Yeah. I'll go with I'll go with those guys. Buckeye basketball team got Buckeye leaves for me last night. What they did against Bama. Wow. Great performance. Roddy Gale and Bruce Thornton. These guys are the real deal. They're it's hard re- real deal. for me to comprehend that the season is just over now. Just work all this way for everything. Well, and then beam, it's just... there's a bowl game coming up. Come <laughs> yeah, on. Don't do that. 
I thought this was <laughs> I I thought this was Optimist Beam. Nah, he's not around today. <laughs> why would there be an Please. Optimist Beam? He's not around. Why would why would I even think that? Gonna enjoy the Cotton Bowl against Steve Sarkeesian in Texas. That's what I'm gonna. It's gonna be really fun. I had so much fun today, Tim. What do you say we do it again for that bowl game? Maybe an outside shot of a college football playoff game. Thanks for asking, Beam. <laughs> The executive producer of Ohio State Radio Sports is Skip Mossick on behalf of our studio producer, Panama, Teddy Holbrook. And for Timmy Hall, I'm Brandon Beam, inviting you to join us Tuesday night at 6 for our final Buckeye Roundtable show of the season presented by Byers Auto. Stay tuned to the station for information on Ohio State's bowl game and the date and time of our AEP Energy Buckeye pregame show. Today's broadcast was brought to you statewide by Incova Insurance and by Bob Evans Farms. Once again, the final score today from the big house. Michigan takes down Ohio State for a third straight season. 30 to 24. Thanks for listening. This is the Ohio State Sports Network from Learfield. Nation. You've had a long, hard day of consuming football. Football is all I got. And as we all know, the only way to prevent a hangover is to have another round. Don't it feel good when you crowd behind you? You know what I'm saying? Let's give them something to cheer for now. This is Ben College Football, football. Night. Early game scores and recaps, along with previews of the big night games. Here's Chops and Reeser. Well, we didn't feel like bringing Chops and Reeser in for what could have been a 15-minute show, a 10-minute show, a 5-minute show. This is how things go. So you got Timmy Hall, you got Brandon Beam, mm-hmm. you got Beamer here. Bridging the gap. 15 minutes of solo Beam. <laughs> With me here. I'm dead inside. Tim. If you don't get that joke, I'm sorry. Common Man made him a show open like one time seven years ago when I'm we dead. needed to fill a gap. I'm dead inside. I'm dead inside. It's it's just awful. Yeah. It's terrible. Awful. Really awful. Where do you go from here? I don't know. I, I don't mean, know you, there's you so many questions you're going to ask this offseason. Where do you, what's the first question? Other than why can't we beat Michigan? How do you beat them? I think that's, an, that's, the, that's the question you ask. How? How? How do you beat them? Next year, it's here. It's at the horseshoe. Had an opportunity to do it last year with CJ. You couldn't get it done. Chunk plays. It's always something. It's just always something. And you have to be able to get off this schneid, man, because three losses in a row to that team, it's quite frankly, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. I thought that with a big guy like Tyleek Williams up front was going to be the perfect kind of guy. Mike Hall Jr. was back in this game. I thought you had the stuff. I thought you had the dudes in the middle of that Ohio State defensive line. I was always a little bit worried about the offensive line, right? And can we say that? Mm -hmm. I mean, they they did the job well enough to win the football game, uh, to win 11 football games before this one. But again, like we talk all year long, what do those 11 wins really matter? I mean, sure, beating Notre Dame on the road is nice. It's, It's great. It's a great win. Beating Penn State is a great win. But you're playing for a bit more than that. Like you're, you're the Maserati. And to go Maserati Marv, right? That's what that's what you are as Ohio State football. So you are trying to be finely tuned so you can get into that college football playoff without a scratch on your door panel. Well, it just means like those first eleven games of the year. There have been ups, there have been downs. You know, we've had our great times here doing the post game show for the Ohio State Sports Network across the great state of Ohio, and it just it doesn't. The season is meaningless now. You don't get to get to go to a college football playoff unless something dramatically breaks your way. Yeah, and you had it go your way last year. Is it going to happen again? It's not going to happen again, no, is it? No, it's not. We're going to watch. We're going to eventually turn the page and watch some of these games. And, you know, Florida State's got the interesting situation with not having Jordan Travis and they drop them. They'll be on the road at Florida. Washington and Washington State is tied at the half. So something cooking right there. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, if. If Washington lost that game, and then they could also hand Oregon a second loss, keeps Oregon out of the mix. You'll play the Bama-Georgia route. You don't want to do all this. Just feels dirty having to do all that. Uh, Sharon Moore coached a really impressive game today at Michigan. I don't think there was one thing that I could flip back over and say, what were you doing there? Why were you doing that? They, They got you with the halfback pass. Yeah. They played sound football the entire game and then worked in that halfback pass, which could have hit for a touchdown to Loveland, where Donovan Edwards just lobs the ball up there very nice. Sonny got 
way caught cheating on oh, that. And he hooked. Made, actually made Baited a and hooked. really nice play to get back and force the tackle. Yeah. But he was coming up at about 600 miles an hour to the line of scrimmage to stop that run because Michigan was kind of asserting their will at the, in the football game at that point in the run game. But, yeah, it was, it was a really, really well-coached game. And I think the couple of big takeaways for me and where it went wrong, it wasn't a physicality thing. It wasn't a grit thing. It wasn't a toughness thing for me, Tim, and you. Like it, that, that wasn't certainly the case today as it's been in it's just years executing. past. It's just yeah. you, were, you weren't able to string together enough in the right sequence to beat them today. You just weren't the better team yeah. when the game came up. It, again, like, yeah, like we, we talked to Michael Bennett on the postgame show, and he's always great. He's really our our post mortem chat because he will speak his mind mm-hmm. and he will he will also speak with a with a certain kind of clarity where it's not just dumping Ohio State under the bus again and again and again and trying to put some reason into it. Now he may or have he those thoughts, that. yeah, right. But he could you know look at that football game for what it was and th- it was the number three team in the country on the road and you're in a you're with a chance to win at the end of the football game. So you've got to dig a little bit deeper as to what are those things being consistent, right? Being more powerful on the offensive line throughout the season, having a better run game, getting that balance that you're looking for. And quarterback play, of course, is something that matters. How many people in Buckeye Nation feel that Kyle McCord will be the guy under center next year? I think it's after this kind of year and the drop off from a Fields and Stroud, and then you lose this game again. It's an open contest. For sure. For sure. Who thinks they're going to maybe take a peek at what's out there to bring someone in for competition. Aaron Nolan, a true freshman. Will there be competition from a true freshman? Lincoln Devin Keenholz, Brown, Devin Brown, keen holes. Yeah. Wide open, right? To just try to get better, more consistent play. I'm very upset for Marv. I'm v- like mm. viscerally upset for him. It is. It's gut wrenching to not see CJ Stroud, get to feel that as good a player as he is. And then to see this guy who played an unbelievable football game here today. I, I didn't know if, if Marv was able to go five for 118 and a touchdown that you'd lose with him doing that. I, I could have sworn that if, if someone got to 21 points with the way these defenses, both of them have been, you win the football game. First time That's Ohio, a little surprising to me. First time Ohio State gave up more than 17 points in a game all year long. All year long. Hadn't done it until today when he gave up 30 points. No doubt. No and the doubt. biggest game of the year is when you do it. Well, Beam, got a final thought? <laughs> Eddie? I know it's not a good one. Yeah, it's just, it's total darkness. Again, for 365 days. Until you're on the precipice and on the doorstep again. That's that's where I think everybody's at. I'll say this, my my spirit is shot. Yeah. On the whole, uh, my spirit is shot on the whole Michigan's a bunch of cheaters, sign stealing scandal, all that. My spirit is ripped out because of that. They're going to do what they do. That's all well and good. They might get hammered. NCAA might hit them, but we've talked a lot. We've talked a lot the last month. You go up there, you lose to a backup coach. This is where we are. It's just going to be gut wrenching for the next year. Football, zero fun, sir. I've seen, I've seen that. Remember the Titans meme used a couple of times. Football zero fun sir. here. It's 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 not fun. We having fun now? No, 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 we're not. No, nothing fun about it. All right, Beamer. Thanks for the extra segment, buddy. You got it. Love you. Ready for Buckeye hoops? I am. I'm gonna settle in and watch some hoops tonight. Take it to the bank with about 15 beers. <laughs> <laughs> Only. <laughs> Maybe 20. Take it to the bank. So who is Santa Clara? Take it to the bank. Get out of here, Take Santa bank. Clara. Emerald Coast Classic champions. You ain't winning this game. This is the this is the Buckeyes time. Their time is now. Bruce Thornton. Bruce Thornton. <laughs> <Him> 42 <laughs> points tonight. <laughs> Let's go, guys. All right. We've got some warm-up coverage. I'll have a chat with Ron Stokes. I need a chat with Ron Stokes to make me feel better talking some Buckeye basketball. We will warm you up for Ohio State. And Santa Clara in the Emerald Coast Classic Championship game. That's coming up here on The Fan. This is the Logan AC and Heat Services Buckeye pregame show on the Ohio State Sports Network from Learfield. Welcome back to the Logan AC and Heat Services Buckeye pregame show as we are getting ready for the championship game at the Emerald Coast Classic. Maybe a little pick us up for Ohio State Athletics today. 
as the Bucks are down in Florida, ready to face Santa Clara. Joey Lane, member of the Towel Gang, former captain of this Buckeye basketball team, and he co-hosts the Drive the Lane podcast. It's a great one to check out. Is with us, Joey. Thanks for doing it. Buckeye basketball needs to come through for Buckeye Nation tonight, right? Oh man, I mean that's uh, um, a nice way of putting it for sure. Uh, I know Buckeye fans are sad, but it seems like it's officially basketball season. 